Hello and welcome to this A-Level Chemistry multiple choice question walkthrough where we're going to be focusing on nine questions in the rate equation topic. Download the questions for yourself from the description, have a go at them and watch this video to see how you got on. The rate expression for the reaction between X and Y is shown here. Which statement is correct? The rate constant has units of mole minus one dm3 s to the minus one. No, that's not correct. A third order overall reaction has the units of mole minus two dm6 s to the minus one for the reasons I'm showing here with the cancelling out of the rearranged K expression. B. The rate of the reaction is halved if the concentration of X is halved and the concentration of Y is doubled. Well, since X is second order, halving it will actually make the reaction four times smaller and doubling Y because it's first order will make the reaction twice as fast. So that doubling and that quartering does result in half the original rate of the reaction. So B is correct. If we triple X, the rate of reaction will get nine times faster and doubling Y will make it twice as fast. So those two things add together to make it 18 times as fast. And the rate constant is independent of temperature is definitely not true. As you increase the temperature, the value of K increases in the pattern such as this. So B is correct. What are the units of the rate constant for a third order reaction? Well, third order reactions could look like this, where you've got rate equals K, A to the 1, B to the 1, C to the 1, in other words, 3 first order, or for instance, rate equals K, X to the 2, Y to the 1. So to calculate K, you'd be left with rate divided by three concentration terms on the bottom. The units of rate of reaction are always moles per decimeter cubed per second, concentration always moles per decimeter cubed. So one moles would cancel out from the bottom and the top, one dm minus three on the bottom and the top. So we're left with seconds to the minus one, mole squared dm minus six on the bottom. You bring the mole squared up to the top, it becomes mole minus two, dm minus six becomes dm six, and s to the minus one stays as it is. So D is the correct units for any third order reaction. The results of an investigation of the reaction between P and Q are shown in this table. What we can see is that two different experiments have been carried out for different concentrations of P and Q, and the initial rate of reaction is shown for both experiments. We're given the rate equation and that we're shown that P is first order because there's no number there, and Q is second order. And we're commanded to calculate the initial concentration of Q in experiment two. So what we need to do is we need to look at what has happened to P. P has been increased by a factor of three. And so as a result of P being first order, a tripling of the concentration will triple the initial rate of reaction. Now that would convert the initial rate of reaction into 1.2. It isn't 1.2, it is only 0.8. So whatever we've done to Q has resulted in the initial rate of reaction decreasing from 1.2 to 0.8. That's a decrease of 1.5. So in other words, the initial rate of reaction has been divided by 1.5. Now, since Q is second order, the change that we've caused to happen to Q has resulted in a 1.5 times smaller initial rate. So that means that the change in Q is the square root of 1.5. So what we need to do is we need to take our 0.5 and divide that by the square root of 1.5, which is 1.225. And so 0.5 divided by that value gives us a concentration of 0.408. And so C is correct. Solutions of two compounds W and X react together in the presence of a soluble catalyst Y as shown in the equation here. When the concentrations of W, X and Y are all doubled, the rate of reaction increases by a factor of four, which is a possible rate equation for this reaction. There are actually three different ways of approaching this question, so I'll try to cover them all. First of all, one of these rate equations includes a product, Z, and so this can't be the correct answer. Secondly, we've got a catalyst, Y, and so catalysts have to appear in the rate equation, and so B and C must be one of the answers. And you can also tell it's a catalyst because it's not in the overall chemical equation because it isn't changed by the reaction. 
Thirdly, since we're doubling the concentrations of everything and the rate is increasing by a factor of four, this tells us that the overall order must be second order. And so we've got the scenario where something could be second order overall, and so doubling its concentration will quadruple the rate by itself, or you've got two first order reactions where doubling each of those concentrations has a doubling effect, and that makes a second order overall. And so that means that when we're choosing between B and C as our two possibilities, the correct answer has to be C because it's got two first order chemicals. B is the wrong answer because if we double the concentration of W, that will square and the rate will be four times bigger by itself. And then doubling the concentration of Y will make it a further twice as big. So overall, the rate would increase by a factor of four. So C is correct because this will double the rate of reaction and this will double the rate of reaction. So increase by a factor of four overall. A series of experiments was carried out to find the order of reaction with respect to reactant X. In these experiments, only the concentration of X was changed. Which graph would show that the reaction is second order with respect to X? When you change the concentration of a reactant, there are actually only three graphs that you could expect to have. Two of them are shown here, and the other is for a zero order reaction, which is the graph that I'm showing here, and that's when rate is independent of the concentration of the reactant. The first order reaction is actually line C. We know it's first order because it's directly proportional. It's a straight line through the origin. Line D is actually the second order reaction because as you increase the concentration, the rate of reaction increases exponentially. Rate is proportional to the concentration of X squared. So D is correct. A rate investigation was carried out on a reaction involving three reactants, X, Y, and Z. The concentrations of the reactants were varied in three separate experiments and the relative rate was determined. The reaction is zero order with respect to Y, what is the overall order of the reaction? Well, first of all, before we do anything else, we can eliminate Y from all of our thoughts because it is zero order. Then if we look at experiment one and two, you can see that the concentration of X has been doubled and Z is unchanged. So any change in the rate is down to the concentration of X change. So we've doubled X, the rate of reaction is four times larger. That means that X must be second order. And so that means that we can eliminate A and B from our thoughts because the order must be at least second order overall. Then if we consider one and three, the concentration of X has been halved, be careful with the standard form there, and the rate of reaction has also been halved. Now we know that X is second order, so halving the concentration of X, that change gets squared, that becomes a quarter, and so the rate of reaction should be a quarter of what it was at first, so 0.25. Now, because we have also doubled Z, that is the cause of that change of 0.25 to 0.5. So you can see that Z has been doubled in concentration and the rate has also been doubled. And that means that Z must not be zero order for a start. And that means that C has to be wrong. But specifically, it means Z must be first order because whatever we've done to Z, we've done to the rate of the reaction. So it must be third order overall. And so D is correct. Here we're being shown a reaction between ethene gas and hydrogen gas to produce ethane. And the rate equation is shown here and it's first order with respect to the ethene and first order with respect to the hydrogen. At a fixed temperature, the reaction mixture is compressed to triple the original pressure. What is the factor by which the rate of reaction will change? Well, when you triple the pressure, that means that you will have, in effect, have divided the volume by three. We've got three times less space for this gas to be in, and so the pressure is three times larger. And so effectively what we're doing here is tripling the concentration of both of these reactants. So tripling the concentration of this first order ethene will triple the rate, and that's the same for the hydrogen. So if the rate triples twice, then overall the rate of reaction will increase by a factor of nine. And so B is correct. This question is about the reaction between propanone and an excess of ethane-1,2-diol, the equation for which is given here. 
In a typical procedure, a mixture of 1 gram of propanone, 5 grams of ethane 1,2-diol and 0.1 grams of benzene sulfonic acid is heated under reflux in an inert solvent. Benzene sulfonic acid is a strong acid. When the concentration of benzene sulfonic acid is doubled, the rate of reaction doubled. It can be deduced that. The reaction is first order overall. No, we can tell that benzene sulfonic acid is first order, but we don't know about any of the others, except the ethane diol is in excess, so that was likely to be zero order. The reaction is third order overall, well we actually don't know whether or not that's true, so we can't confirm that. The reaction is acid catalyzed. Yes, we can confirm that this is the case. Benzene sulfonic acid has this formula. You'll notice that it does not appear as a reactant in this equation or as a product, just as an aside. And so that is going to be a catalyst because it is not in the chemical equation, but its rate is important. As we're shown here, we double the concentration, the rate doubles, it's first order. So it must be a catalyst because doubling it doubles the rate, first order, but it doesn't appear in the chemical equation. In other words, it is unchanged overall. And D is not correct because we just don't know what the overall order is and so we can't confirm what the units of the rate constant could be. Those might be correct but we just don't know because we don't know any information about the propanone. And so C is correct. Here we're being shown a rate equation, rate equals k, a to the power 2 and b to the power 1. Correct units for the rate constant in the rate equation above are so when you're working out the units of the rate constant, you need to rearrange the equation and make k the subject. So k equals rate divided by those three concentration terms. Concentrations units are moles per decimeter cubed. Rate is moles per decimeter cubed per second. And so when we write it out like this, you can see that one moles will cancel from the top and the bottom and one dm minus three. So we've got seconds to the minus one divided by mole squared dm minus 6. You then bring the mole squared up to the top, it becomes mole minus 2, dm 6, and then s to the minus 1. And so d is correct. Okay, that's the end of this question and the end of this video. I hope it was useful. I'll see you again soon.